This is a very typical Dansha landform, named after Mount Dansha in the southwest region of the country. The mountain stands by the water, and the water flows around the mountain. This is a crucial area in terms of biodiversity, with its well-preserved native forest ecosystem and rare plant and animal species. It has been called a biological window on the world. An amazing plant grows called tea. Its fragrance has delighted people all over the world. There's an old village in this remote mountainous area where China's greatest ancient philosopher once lived. For seven centuries, his doctrines were central to the ideology and culture of China's feudal society. There is also the site of a royal city from 2,000 years ago. This ancient civilization in the southernmost part of China flourished and ultimately disappeared. This is Mount Wuyi in Fujian province in southeast China. Mount Wuyi is a mid-subtropical zone in northwest Fujian province and has a total area of almost a thousand square kilometers. One day, in 1193, a scholar living on Mount Wuyi greeted a long-awaited friend. The two of them took the most famous sightseeing tour in the history of Mount Wuyi on a raft on the Nine. The peaks on both sides are naturally arranged in a row. Every peak is a single boulder, and the boulder have a variety of shapes and sizes. This mighty boulder is like an eagle about to take off into the sky. Great King Peak has steep sides and is shaped like a crown. Jade Maiden Peak, which stands apart from the others, is tall, straight, and beautiful. His visitor, Xin Qiji, was a famous Chinese poet. 
and his host was Zhu Xi, China's greatest ancient thinker, who spent his whole life on Mount Wuyi. That day, both of them composed beautiful poems in praise of Mount Wuyi, both of which became famous. Nature is still displaying her incomparably beautiful scenery on Mount Wuyi. Billions of years of natural forces on Mount Wuyi have created a rare zone of natural beauty. Mountains gradually rose. Valleys continuously deepened and the mountains turned a reddish brown due to oxidation, eventually creating a typical Danxia landform. Most regions at the same latitude are desert with sparse vegetation. But on Mount Wuyi, the forces of nature have created the largest, best preserved, and most representative mid-subtropical native forest ecosystem at this latitude zone. It is a truly unique landscape. Mount Huanggan, at 2,158 meters above sea level, is the highest peak in eastern China. It blocks the cold current from the north and the moist warm air from the ocean. The four distinct seasons and rainy humid weather create an excellent ecological environment. There are five belts of vegetation, each with distinctive characteristics. Mount Wuyi is home to 11 types of vegetation, including 840 kinds of low-growing plants and almost 2,900 kinds of high-ranging plants. It exhibits all the features of mid-subtropical regions in China. This is the only area in the world at this latitude to do so. Globally, 34 orders of insects have been identified, 31 of which including more than 4,600 species, are found on Mount Wuyi. Experts estimate there are still over 15,000 species of insects yet to be discovered. Mount Wuyi could be called a world of insects. The forest is nearly a thousand square kilometers in area and contains human footprints from tens of thousands of years ago. Chang village at the southern foot of Mount Wuyi is very old. Around the sixth century, the original villagers were displayed by migrants from northern China who were the ancestors of the current residents. According to legend, a different ethnic group once lived here some 2,000 years ago and even set up their own government.
Between the cliffs, there are many canoe-shaped coffins up to 100 meters above the river. Researchers found some 40 suspended coffins and many supporting wooden boards. These are the most legendary ruins on Mount Wuyi. These well-preserved coffins are currently the oldest known hanging coffins in the world. They lived in mountain caves and were buried in the mountains when they died. But no one knows why they put their coffins so high up in the cliffs. The hanging coffins of Mount Wuyi date from about 3,500 years ago. This coffin was made from a whole tree, and the grain in the wood can still be seen. Inside this canoe-shaped coffin is a male skeleton wrapped in bamboo mats. The shape of the coffins may reflect the lifestyle of the people buried in them and express the hope of the living for the return of the dead to their hometown. The burials show the great respect of the locals for the mountains and rivers and their primitive beliefs in eternal life. Their lifestyle among the cliffs continues here more than a thousand years later. These ancient cliff dwellings are over 30 meters high and not connected by paths. This group of cave rooms takes full advantage of natural crevices and includes a living room, storage room, and bedrooms. Like their ancestors, Modern residents find refuge in the caves in dangerous times. Chinese history books from the second century BC mention a kingdom called Min Yue. When the independent kingdom was defeated by the Han army, the kingdom's palace was destroyed by fire and the people were relocated to the north. The ancient kingdom only lasted 92 years. In the 1980s, Chinese archaeologists excavated a hilly area near Chang village. The ancient kingdom of Mingyue once again came to light, 2,000 years after it had disappeared. The archaeological excavation showed that these ruins were once the Mingyue royal city, destroyed by fire about 110 BC. The main palace is centrally located on high ground. The entire hall sits above the ground on many short posts to allow air circulation, reduce moisture, and deter pests. Only the upper floors were used as living quarters. The rectangular main palace faces south and covers an area of 930 square meters. The main palace is an impressive closed off independent complex lying along the central axis with a total area of 20,000 square meters. The buildings in the royal city 
are all in harmony with the mountain terrain. The rammed earth walls follow the contours of the terrain. There is an observation deck on a high point to the northwest. The mountain to the north of the city forms a natural barrier. It faced the fertile floodplain to the northeast. A sluice was built to control the river that flows from west to east along the mountains. An artificial channel with east and west sluices in the central southern part of the city was used to transport bulky cargo. Two streams flowed through the city and flowed into Chongyang Creek. The city had four gates on the east, south, west, and north sides and occupied an area of 480,000 square meters. Many cultural relics were unearthed from the site that showed the advanced technological level of that time. city, hidden from the world for more than 2,000 years, had a glorious and prosperous past. nearby ancient village was founded more than a thousand years ago in the mid 10th century. In 1143, 14-year-old Zhu Xi came here to live and study. He was one of the greatest thinkers in the history of ancient China. The doctrines developed by Confucius in the 6th century BC eventually became Confucianism, the earliest set of ethical and social norms in China. In the 12th century, Zhu Xi developed a new ideological and theoretical system based on traditional Confucian doctrines that later became known as Neo-Confucianism. Zhu Xi is the most influential thinker in ancient Chinese history after Confucius. Xingxian Academy in Wu Fu Li, where Zhu Xi often lectured, was built in 1189. Local children came here to listen to the teachings of Zhu Xi 800 years ago. Wu Yi Academy on Hidden Screen Peak is the most important public building on Mount Wu Yi. Zhu Xi wrote books, gave lectures, and met with scholars here for eight years. For this reason, 
Mount Wuyi is considered an important source of ancient Chinese ideology and culture. At the core of Neo-Confucianism is a set of heavenly principles. They exist independent of the material world, have no beginning or end, and are the source of everything in the universe. They may look different, but everything is related because the heavenly principles are fundamental to all things. In society, heavenly principles are universally recognized as ethical guidelines that are eternal, supreme, true, kind, and beautiful. Human desires are the enemy of the heavenly principles and must be repressed. Zhu Xi's philosophy is reflected in his interpretation and elaboration of major Confucian classics. He spent his whole life writing the very Orem edition of the four books. In 1313 AD, the emperor of the Yuan dynasty decreed that Zhu Xi's books be the basis of the civil service examination, making his commentary state-approved texts. Neo-Confucianism became the mainstream ideology and culture for the next 700 years of the imperial system. The banks of the river deep in the gorge are misty, but get sun all year round. One plant species does especially well here, one with a unique, mellow fragrance. Tea has been an important part of the lives of the people of Mount Wuyi for millennia. They drink Wuyi rock tea, a kind of tea that only grows on the rocks of this mountain. Tea cave, hidden deep among the peaks, receives ample sunlight and has a year-end waterfall. It was said that rock tea was first grown here. In 1302, the Yuan Emperor had the royal tea garden built by Nine Bang River, which produced 180 kilograms of tea a year. Wu Yi rock tea was formally made the official tea of the court. In the 17th century, China began exporting rock tea to Europe. Many Westerners simply call it Chinese tea. Four leafy teas grow on one side of a cliff among the hills. The smooth and shiny, dark green leaves are used to produce the famous Da Hong Pao, a brand of rock tea over 300 years old. Wu Yi rock tea, especially the Da Hong Pao brand, is one of the finest Chinese teas. The 
the rainy season begins around May or June on Mount Wuyi, bringing life to the flora of Mount Wuyi. In the cliffs, the falling water blows about in the wind. Waterfalls in different forms fall from the sky. The streams never stop running. Mount Wuyi is a rare zone of natural beauty and home to rare and endangered plants and animals. Mount Wuyi, site of an ancient civilization, is one of the birthplaces of traditional Chinese thinking. Mount Wuyi is a masterpiece of nature.